Hello everyone again. Um, today we are in beautiful Namakwa land slash Richtersveld. I'm here with my two ugly brothers. <laughs> slash beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and we are heading, going, heading up to Pella tomorrow morning and we're going to do the Namakwa 4x4 Eco Challenge or challenge slash route, not really a challenge. Um, Namakwa 4x4 Eco Trail. There we mm. go, that's the word. Mm. And we're doing just the part one. Um, don't have enough time for part two as well, unfortunately. Yeah. And it should be a lot of fun. I think we're quite excited. Mm. Um, mm. So nice to have all the brothers together again. Yeah. yeah. We're currently easy. camping here uh, close to Fjolls Drift um, at Orange River Rafting Lodge. Um, really nice. Would definitely recommend it. It's really beautiful. And we're here in what early or mid December. Yes, and we were expecting to be dying of the heat, but You've so got far, a top on. so far it's <laughs> not so bad. I've got a jersey top on, so we. Yeah. It's actually down here by the river. Like honestly, it's like the perfect, perfect temperature. But it was hot this afternoon. It yeah, yeah but, it, but it wasn't shy or footy, but but it wasn't like stupid hot. Like yeah, I didn't was, feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah but like, because we're at the water, I think it makes a yeah, exactly makes a huge yeah. difference. And I think just being able to access the water to like for mm. swimming and mm. just chill, mm. just chilling. Yeah, all route is against the river. Yeah, so we're very excited for the route. It follows the river down from Pella down to Fjols Drift. Um, we're expecting it to be four or well, five days, four nights uh, wild camping. Mm. It should be a lot of fun. We're super keen. Go on Dwight. Yeah and I think it's uh, um, at least Livingston over there in the back's first proper off-road test which uh, we'll see how he does. Um, and we've already nearly run out of fuel once. Yeah, the obviously the, de the defender almost let us down. <laughs> Livia pushed through right all day. <laughs> With like three kilometers to go in the tank. Yeah, <laughs> 60 k's on a reserve tank is not bad. Not bad. <laughs> in case you're wondering, a Land Rover can do 60 to 90, what, 100 k's they almost on a reserve Some tank. Some people talked about 100 k's. I think it's 15% of the tank that's left when the reserve light comes on. So it's actually very concerning. That's not bad. <laughs> Tested the limits on the first yeah. day yeah. without any jerry cans or anything. Mm. Really Amateur. In trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we look forward to it. I'm going to enjoy our evening here. We've already lit the fire. Going to mm. buy some chops, vos, and a braibriki, obviously. What else? Obviously. And then have an early night, get some good sleep in, and tomorrow hit the road. And we'll yeah. see you guys out there. It's going to be cool. Good morning. So, we're on our way, heading to the Namakwa 4x4 Eco Trails head. So, the start. Um, so, basically, uh, we are starting at the little town of Pella, which is close to Bofader. And then we are making our way back towards Fjolstruf. Um And, yeah, so I think we have about a two... I think two and a half hour drive to the start of the trail um, and then yeah then our trail starts from there okay so we finally arrived at the start of the trail uh, some we're getting fresh beers in hand it is a lovely hot day I think it's probably like 35 between 38 well, I didn't look last something there um, but damn these are two sexy looking cars uh, but yeah so this is our start and now we're driving how long I don't know probably two three hours uh, to our first campsite and first order of business open a beer second order of business deflate tires I think we're going down to about 1.5 1.4 we'll see exactly what feels comfortable and then lastly before we leave again lunch leftovers all right
uh, we've just passed here through the town of Pella. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, I think that's what it's called. And well, it's a really interesting town. Um, really cute. So if you do, or if you're gonna do the trail, I would suggest just driving through, having a look. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. And now we're heading up towards Charlie's Pass, which is just over there. Um, we've heard that the views are unmissable and that the route's not too challenging, so we'll have a okay. look. Alright, so we've made it to camp numero uno. It's the end of day one on the trail. It was absolutely amazing. And have a look at this camping spot. Like, there isn't a better camping spot available. Um, 
that's what's really amazing about this trail is it's just all wild camping. So we just chose a beautiful spot here next to the river and it's gonna make, make it home for tonight. Let's get camp set up. Good morning from a beautiful morning on the second day of our Namakwa 4x4 Eco Trail. Um, so, as you guys would hopefully have seen, uh, last night we found a stunning little camping spot here on the banks of the Orange River. Um, it really is like words cannot describe it. But actually, you know, maybe the drone footage kind of describes it from yesterday. <laughs> But yeah, no, it is like incredibly beautiful. Uh, I've had a good night's sleep and you know what? It actually wasn't that hot. Um, actually in the evening it got quite cool, which is really pleasant. Um, we had a nice braai. Uh, we just chilled around the campfire for a while. Yeah, no, it's just fantastic out here. Uh, and Marco caught a lot of yellowfish and barbel um, catfish. And yeah, well, you'd be amazed how much fish there is in this river. Like you can literally, if you stand on the banks at night with a torch, there are hundreds of fish, like right in front of you, like decent sized fish. And you can literally just catch them with your hands. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so we are going to get packing up, not soon, but uh, soon-ish. First make some coffee, have some breakfast and then we'll get packing up and whatever. Um, and I think today we have about 100 Ks to go, which is quite far. So it's a long day today. Um, but tonight we are staying at a area called the Groot Malkboom, I think. The Groot Malkoutboom, that's, I think, something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're going tonight.
Alrighty, we are ready to leave. Uh, all packed up. Car's looking sexy as ever. <laughs> um, yeah, and now we're heading back that way, back across the river and through the sand pit, and then around these mountains over here to somewhere down there, downstream. We're excited. So we've stopped uh, for a lunch break. Marco made us some delicious leftover steak, tomato, and uh, cheese. No cheese? Cheese? No cheese. I can't tell. No cheese, but delicious little sandwiches for lunch. 
the mayo. The oh yeah, mayo, mayo of course. <laughs> of course, I'm sorry. Disappointment. Um, but yeah, we found this beautiful stop here with a nice look over the river. Um, it's really hot, but it's fun. It's actually not, it's, it's not as bad as we expected. And now we have, what, about 30 or 30 or 40 k's left to go to the uh, Malkot Boom, which is our camp for tonight. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. The scenery is stunning and the cars are performing exceptionally. I'll see you guys along the way and at camp. Thank you. 
Alrighty, <laughs> we've made it to our second camp on the Namaka 4x4 Eco Trail. Uh, we are here at the Groot Melk Houtboom, or maybe is it the Groot Melkboom? One of the two, I can't remember exactly. Um, but it is really Malk beautiful. Melk Houtboom, alright, that's it. <laughs> um, but it is really beautiful. Marco is out there catching fish, obviously. Uh, he's, I think we've, I've seen him catch one uh, yellowfish, but don't know how many actually. Um, and yeah, we've set up our camp over here, facing the river, looking beautiful. And it's, the surroundings are stunning. Can't wait to show you guys around a bit more. Oh yes, and our drive today was uh, it was it was actually a lot of fun. It was far. I think it was about 130 k's. Um, so we drove from Kleinpela here to Groot Malkoutboom, um, and yeah, through the town of Witbank, which is uh, very interesting, very small, very interesting. Don't really understand why people live there, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was a fun drive, but it got quite long. We left at 10 this morning and only arrived at 5 p.m. But I think that is just because we did drive very slowly. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think it's time for a gin and tonic now.
Alrighty, had a fantastic dinner. Thanks to uh, Cornell over there. Had some nice pop and vos and sauce, which was delicious. And uh, we had a little <laughs> surprise chili popper. <laughs> Uh, they were jalapeno chili poppers. They were a little bit uh, warmer than uh, we expected. Almost as hot as the desert here. Yeah. Uh, Marco loved them though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, now it's time for a nice shower and sleep. So, see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Good morning from another beautiful day in Africa. Uh, we are currently on our third day on the Namakwa 4x4 Eco Trail and we, well, last night we camped here at Die Groot Malkout Boom uh, camp, wild campsite. Uh, there's actually a big tree about it that's like probably 100 meters from the river so we didn't want to camp there. Um, so yeah, we chose a beautiful spot right here next to the river and it is absolutely stunning as hopefully you saw in the previous episode. Um, got some really nice drone footage. Uh, but yeah, so the plan for today is we're gonna chill a bit, make some coffee, breakfast, just relax a bit. We don't have that far to go. Uh, tonight we're staying at the Ramon's Drift Wild Camp area. And that's, I think, looking at tracks for Africa, it's about 30, 31 Ks. Um, so I think it's literally like, just around the bend on that mountain over there. Um, but yeah, so we drive inland around this mountain and then back to the river. And I've heard that that campsite is spectacular. So I'm very excited for that. But I mean like, how can you get better than this and better than our previous campsite? But either way, we look forward to it. And yeah, I would definitely recommend coming to do this trail. It is absolutely fantastic. It's a lot of fun. It's the middle of December, it is hot, but I mean, it's not unbearable, especially down here by the river. There's actually like a nice cool breeze coming off of the river. And as Marco would say, I, look, I, oh, I don't know if you can see him, he's way back there on the river, but the fishing is also incredible. Well, anyway, let's get to it.
Alrighty, so this is the the uh, Groot Malkout Boom. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit sad. Half of it's burnt down. Uh, apparently, someone tried to get bees out of the tree and then burnt the whole thing down. Half of it. Um, and those are our two noble steeds, Livia and Livingston. And the company. Uh, but yeah, so now we're off to Ramon's Drift. It's about 30 k, it should take us about an hour.
All right, so we've just arrived at Raman's Drift and it is f***ing amazing. It's good. <laughs> it's so good. good. You're like, do a peep there. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this. And the water is full of fish. <laughs> we've hardly stopped and Marco already has a line in the water. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. There's grass here, lovely river view, um, clean, fresh water, lots and lots of fish. And I think this is going to be a fantastic camp. Uh, we're going to get set up quickly. Um, yeah, get everything ready. Fantastic, all set up and yeah, no, it's really beautiful. It's hot, it's really hot. Um, we're a bit protected from the breeze by the trees and stuff, so it's a bit hot, but oh, it's nice. Can I go for a swim now? Alrighty, so uh, it's a really hot day today. I think Cornell's Landy was saying 41 in the shade. Um, so it's a little toasty. <laughs> um, so we brought the gazebo and chairs into the river and it's a fantastic idea. Um, and sitting over here, having a nice drink. Don't call me a croc, <laughs> <laughs> These crocs, they're ugly, but they are the best <laughs> things on a trip like this. They really are. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as you can see, it is absolutely beautiful and uh, I think we'll fly the drone a bit later as well. Cheers. Oh, and I forgot. Have a look at all the fish around us. The best way to keep cool in the Makwaland.
Alrighty, so this morning we've uh, had a, had to have a quick start. Uh, we have a long drive today, so I didn't get to do any updates uh, before we left. But yeah, welcome to day four of the Namakura 4x4 Eco, Eco Trail. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had an awesome previous three days. Really fantastic, great campsites uh, down by the river. Really beautiful views, pristine, clean water. Uh, decent fishing. There's, there's loads of fish in the river. Um, I think the trick is just to catch them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so today we are heading from uh, Ramansdruf down to Kamkhab Nature, well, <laughs> to Kamkhab uh, Wild Camping Area. Um, it's, I think, Tracks for Africa is saying it's 73 kilometers to go. So it's, yeah, it's not too bad, but it is, it's quite a long day. And later today we have to drive down the Kamkhab riverbed, which I've heard takes at least three hours to do. I think it's like 30 k's or something like that. So yeah, we're trying to get away a bit earlier today uh, so we don't get there too late. Um, but yeah, I think looking forward to a good drive today and an awesome camping spot this evening.
Good morning from another beautiful day in Africa. <laughs> uh, we are now on day five of the Namakwa 4x4 Eco Trail. Um, we camped here at Kamkhab last night. Oh, there's a spider web in the lens. <laughs> um, yeah, stayed here at Kamkhab last night. It's a nice campsite. I uh, wouldn't say it's the best on the route, um, but it's still nice. Enjoyed it. Uh, so down right here by the river. Um, it's quite small, there's not much space here. You can see the backs there, and the car kind of has to stand a little bit in the water for uh, to make enough space for the tent on a little bit of level ground. Um, but yeah, it is beautiful. Had a good night's sleep, uh, just had a nice coffee, and I think we're gonna get packing up and hit the road soon. Uh, we have to still drive back up the riverbed and then make our way to the road. Um, yeah, unfortunately it is our last day, so that's not so great, but uh, I think we've had a great time, had a lot of fun, and seen some really beautiful places. Uh, Marco also tried fishing a bit uh, yesterday afternoon and this morning. Nothing this morning, and I think he caught one barbel and uh, I think what it was a mud yellow fish or something like that. Um, but yeah, so not not too much, but still good. A lot of fun out here. Anyway, let's get cracking. Alrighty, we're all packed up, ready to go. The roof rack's packed. Uh, tires still deflated. <laughs> uh, hot and sweaty. Uh, defender packed already, putting on some sunscreen, sun, sunscreen, that one. Uh, getting ready for the 4x4 track out of here. Uh, no, we haven't just been swimming. <laughs> yes, we have not just been swimming. It is bloody hot. It's what, like 10 a.m. and it is, it's hot. But actually, but it's fun. It's a, we're having fun. And it's not, it's not unbearably hot. It's about At least for us. How much? 31.5 in the shade. 31.5 in the shade. It's nice, nice and warm. Um, but yeah, campsite rating. Out of 10, four, I'd say there are three or four, just because it, it's supposed to be like a exclusive wild camping site, uh, at least according to the info page and the booking people um, for the Namakwa 4x4 trail. Um, but last night there were at least 10 vehicles in and out here, and there really is only space for three max um and obviously ideally you'd want to be on your own like in most of the other campsites 
So yeah, unfortunately alone, I think a three is fair, three out of 10. Um, whereas the first night was 10. definitely 10, maybe 11 out of 10. Second night was a good eight or nine. Uh, Roman's Thrift was also probably like a nine, was very nice. And this is like a three. So the drive down to Kamkhab is beautiful, but the campsite, eh, not so much. Like it's nice, it's really nice. But I mean, it's obviously uh, very popular. Which, yeah, no, obviously, we are spoiled with the wild camping. Yeah, yeah no, 100%. Um, but yeah, so we, an hour and a half drive out of the canyon or out of the riverbed. And then gonna go to a viewpoint just to quickly look. And then on to finish the trail today. I think, not sure how far we have, but I guess probably 30, 40 Ks. I don't think it's that far. Um, but yeah, not done yet. So, uh, we've hit the road now, we, yeah, we packed up everything, hit the road, and I guess, yeah, now we're driving up the riverbed, and it's a beautiful hot day, and we're having fun.
Rojo. trees are called half mint trees which means half man they are only found in this region and yeah they only grow between five to ten mils every year legend has it that the nama people were driven out of namibia by a black tribe and they stopped to look back and were then turned into plants Our navigator. Hello. With all his notes. I navigate. That's what I do. I navigate and I know things. Alright, well, we made it back to the tar road and that brings our trip to an end. Um, gonna blow up, pump up our wheels again, get back to road pressures, maybe have a quick sneaky beer and yeah, uh, it's been a great time but I think we'll uh, talk about it a bit more this evening. Uh, we're going back to Fjolstrift, there to a campsite just to relax for the evening and then leave tomorrow morning again early back down to the Cape. Um, but yeah, I think we'll uh, leave you with some thoughts down by the river.
trip uh, yesterday evening, but we were a bit tired and just wanted to relax and chill a bit. Uh, and there were a couple of people around who were making some noise and stuff, so yeah, not ideal, but anyway, uh, here we are. <laughs> so, the Namako 4x4 Eco Trail. Wow, it was, it's fantastic. It really is fantastic. Um, it is incredibly beautiful. It is, it's barren. There's like many people would say that there's just nothing, and well, I guess there's just nothing, and it very much has its own beauty. And the mountains are stunning, and the little river, the dry river beds running through the area between the mountains, and yeah, no, it's just fantastic. Um, in terms of four by four difficulty. Uh, it's not that bad. It's really not that difficult. Um, I, I would say you definitely do need a 4x4. There are sections that you will not be able to pass with a 2x4. Um, they are definitely not. But most of the trip is doable in a 2x4. Um, you'll just have to, yeah, I don't know. Okay, that's it. a 4x4 is necessary, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think overall it's, I think we did rough, I can't remember the exact number, but it's roughly 300 kilometers over the four and a half days, uh, basically four days. Um, I know lots of people do it over three days or three and a half days, but we decided we wanted to stay an extra day on the trail. Um, just, you know, because it's, it's really nice there. And, the uh, camping next to the river, the wild camping next to the river is really phenomenal. Um, yeah, talking about camping, uh, if you do want to do the trip, you have to be completely self-sufficient. There are no toilets, there's no water, um, there, there's literally nothing. Um, you can get water from the river, and uh, you could drink it. Um, I can definitely drink it after boiling it, but I mean it, the water is good for washing up and showering and stuff like that. And otherwise, yeah, with the camping, um, our first night of camping was a wild campsite just next to the river. Well, they're all wild campsites, but this one was uh, not an official campsite. And it was absolutely stunning, a solid 10 or 11 out of 10. <laughs> um, it was really nice. And then the three other campsites that we stayed at were Nikhrud, Malkot, Boom, Raman Strip, and Kamkhod. Now, I know this sounds like a stupid thing to ask, but guys, you really you need to book the campsites. Um, so you don't necessarily book a specific site, but you book for camping in a certain area. And basically we came across a lot of people on the trail that had not booked and filled up the campsites and especially on the last night they've come up. And that just, that was not nice. Um, there, were, were, there was literally maximum space for three cars there. And there were 10, I think 10 or 11 cars that came in through the night, through the afternoon and the evening. And yeah, no, it was just ridiculous. Just people taking chances and just driving around and seeing if there's an open spot um, and not booking. So please, if you do the trail, please do the right thing and book. Um, yeah, it should guarantee you a spot. Or yeah, it should guarantee you a spot at the campsites. Um, and I mean, at least if there is someone in the spot and you have a permit, like a booking permit, then you are allowed to chase them away. Um, because it's actually absolutely ridiculous that people go camp without permits. But anyway, yeah. So the campsites were really nice. Best was our first wild campsite that we found along the river. Second best, I would say, was Bromwood Strip. That was very nice as well. Um, there's a very nice shaded uh, grassy area next to the river, which was beautiful. Yeah, no, that was nice. Uh, then next down the list, uh, following very closely, was uh, the Khrut Malkot campsite. That was 
that was also really nice, like right by the river. We found a nice spot in between two big bushes, um, which gave us some shade. And yeah, no, it was just the scenery was stunning. And then obviously, as, as you can tell, lastly would be Kamkha. The drive down to Kamkha was really nice, very, really good. It was a little four, a four by four section. I think it took us about an hour and a half from the start of the tougher section. Uh, so it follows a dry riverbed down to the river. Um, there's just a couple like big rocks that you have to drive over and some slopes to drive down and navigate your way in between in between tight rocks, like rocks close together and stuff. Um, for longer cars it's a bit of a tight fit but you can still make it. Uh, like uh, Cornell in his Land Rover, there are some places where you just where to turn, reverse and then turn again to make it around the corner. Um, but yeah, there, you, there's, there are people that go down with trailers and they're all happy, so it, it's not actually a problem. Uh, in terms of the sand, there's not, there, there, obviously there's uh, reasonable sand across the whole trail, um, with a few sections with, with some thicker sand. But as long as you deflate your tires to a reasonable pressure. Um, so I had like, I think 1.2 bars in the front and 1.5 in the back. Uh, just because I'm heavily laden in the back and it literally just floats over the sand so just yeah tire pressures I remember and what else yeah I think that was about it I, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little series of videos um, I know I definitely did enjoy it and I enjoyed making it and oh yeah so the Orange River is also pretty good for fishing um, if you know how to catch the fish. <laughs> I'm joking. No, Marco caught a couple nice ones, um, but not as many as he wanted to. He could clearly see the fish in the river because the water is extremely clean, um, but they just would not bite. Probably down to wrong time of year or something like that. But yeah, and yeah, so I just want to say thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit that little subscribe button in your bottom right hand side and the little like button just next to that as well. Like, it really does make a difference. Um, yeah, so, yeah, hope you guys stick around for future trips. I don't know what's next, but I'm sure there'll be something. Well, stay well and keep exploring. Cheers.